What's going on there, guys? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Tuesday night. It is October 18th, 2022, about 7.23 p.m. California time. And the uh, latest quake on the globe there shows a 2.1 earthquake out, well, that's pretty fast, out there into the Puerto Rico area. Uh, I am working on a completely entirely new upgrade here of the Earthmaster channel as uh, far as the servers go and the computer systems go on my end. So bear with me if there's a couple uh, glitches that may be noticeable. Um, it looks like I have amplified up the uh, arrow a little bit for a viewer, um, better viewing, I should say. And also here, I'm able to, at least on this format, able to include uh, a little bit more drawing dynamics out here, so to speak, um, in terms of uh, potentially pointing out plate boundaries and whatnot and their direction. That's just a little, uh, a little drawing there. But uh, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I am doing a major upgrade here on the system and also on the channel itself. I will be uh, including a second live stream here uh, covering completely volcano activity, uh, volcano webcams along with volcanic uh, um, harmonic trimmer, uh, earthquake activity associated with volcanic um, activity. So it should be pretty cool. There's that. Oh, that's kind of weird, though. Getting that that weird hand on here again on the on a completely new computer. OK, we'll just roll with it. Uh, so hopefully the arrow's not too big. It's pretty big on my end, um, but I think it's uh, it looks, at least here on the recording screen, it looks all right. It doesn't look overwhelmingly too big. So if it is, let me know, and I'll, I'll uh, shrink it down a little bit. All right, what do we got for earthquake activity right now? Oh, man, that's kind of bugging me there with that, uh, that glove. But uh, <laughs> earthquake activity, let's start out here along the West Coast, folks. This is the uh, all magnitudes map, past 24 hours of earthquake activity. Most of this movement up here in the Northern California, older activity. You haven't really seen too much in terms of newer activity around the Bay Area. Just one earthquake here along the Hayward Fault. Uh, looks like a 1.2. That one occurring a little bit earlier this afternoon time frame, 8.8 .8 kilometers there uh, for the depth of that earthquake. A little spotty movement throughout the Mammoth Lakes Long Valley Super Volcano area. And also Ridgecrest area. Uh, this zone right here. This little zone. Let me check this out. See if I can uh, get this right. I'm just I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work with this. Uh, but there's a there's a fracture zone right here, roughly about from here to here that uh, popped back in 2019. Uh, the July 4th, July 5th sequence of earthquakes there. And that's kind of right there where the earthquake activity has been occurring. Uh, for quite some time since those earthquakes struck back there in uh, 2019. Uh, the Garlock Fault Shear Zone looks pretty quiet for now. No major uptick in movement. And uh, Southern California, pretty spotty. Um, not a whole lot whatsoever, to be honest, as uh, far as the movement goes in Southern California area. There's that movement up against the mountain range. This would be a good time to check this out here once again. Uh, you can kind of see this line of activity up against the crest of the mountains here. And it, sometimes it stretches all the way across down here into Southern California, uh, where this uh, other fault system tends to go in the uh, west to east fashion, fashion here. And at times we'll see a lot of earthquake activity stretching its way all the way down that line up against the mountains here. And uh, occasionally uh, we'll get some swarms out there that are uh, kicking up against those mountain ranges. Not tonight though, not today. Just a couple spotty earthquakes, but you can kind of pinpoint the dots, uh, kind of make the uh, connection there down to this area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, only five earthquakes listed up here on the map, nothing significant. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here. And uh, looks like Maple Creek area. Let me turn that down a little bit. These uh, the zoom is slightly larger than I want here. A um, little bit of movement here in the Maple Creek area. This is like a, again an ongoing swarm of earthquakes 
you can go back on any given day here over the past um, six or seven weeks and see that there's been quite a bit of continuous earthquake activity here at Yellowstone. And let's go ahead and check out the tally. I didn't get a chance to count all of those spikes out there like I was going to. I've been working on this computer here for literally the past four hours. And uh, finally got everything set back up the way it's supposed to, I believe. And uh, for a tally, at least around the Yellowstone area, looking at 578 earthquakes here um, around the Yellowstone region. And most of it is microquake activity, but it's a pretty good number. And if we were to go back even prior to the 30 days, we would probably add on a couple more hundred earthquakes up there to the list. Uh, but today, they're only showing five earthquakes. I think, though, that we have more than five earthquakes listed up here on the last 24-hour map as uh, far as the seismographs go. But hey, at least the USGS is trying, right? They're getting some of those quakes up there. Not too worried about those little specks of uh, microquakes. Man, that's bugging me right here. That's so weird. Um, <laughs> I don't know why it does that. It's odd. Anyway, all right. Um, New Madrid Zone is a pretty lengthy fault system right here across this area. It's an intraplate um, fault system. Kind of sits here within this area. And uh, there's some other fault systems up north here. But, man, when, when big earthquakes strike out here in this part of the country, the amount of, uh, of movement is felt over a broader area uh, compared to areas along the west coast, for example. Uh, so if a seven-pointer strikes out here, uh, they feel it well up in New York, uh, all over the place, all over the eastern portion of the country. New Madrid zone, a pretty hazardous area. Looking at the specific hazard map here, shows the, uh, the dynamics here of the New Madrid zone. One day again, no doubt that will continue, uh, that will uh, pop off a large earthquake. For now, it's just letting us know that it's active. Uh, the last 30 days of earthquake activity out here has been somewhat spotty. We've seen months before where we're looking at probably 40 or 50 earthquakes around the New Madrid zone, and sometimes more. But only 22 earthquakes listed up here on the map for the New Madrid zone over the last 30 days. But it's still active, let me tell you. Still an active, active fault zone. Puerto Rico area, got some movement uh, stretching up here around the Puerto Rico trench. This area, once again... Uh, a major player and possibly producing a mega quake super deep trench here and um, today what do we got here zooming in got about 13 uh, 16 earthquakes or so within this area that includes this little swarm down here nothing spectacular going on do have a 3.8 over here around the uh, Dominican Republic area some of these other earthquakes North of Puerto Rico, around the Puerto Rico Trench, run about 3.3 to 3.3. Uh, some other twos in there as well. But getting a little bit of swarming up there around that region. Uh, there's a deep earthquake earlier today in the Colum Columbia area, 4.7. 163 kilometers deep there into this region of the um, Colombian Trench, it looks like. Little sub, a little subduction zone there in that area. Some spotty movement throughout the Prue-Chile Trench. Movement into Alaska. Man, what is up with that thing? That's so weird. Anyone know why that happens? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to take care of it because that's just odd. 3.1 near Point McKenzie, Alaska. About 18 kilometers deep there, just outside of Anchorage. The Cook Inlet area looks pretty quiet. Only a couple spotty earthquakes along the Aleutian Trench, about the same. Got one earthquake over here registering a 4.4. That one coming in earlier, much earlier this morning along the Aleutian Trench. Western, northwestern Pacific uh, Ring of Fire. A couple earthquakes over the last 24 hours, including a 4.6. Into the Kuril Kamachaka Trench there at about 31 kilometers deep. Also a Japan Trench earthquake. That one coming in earlier today as well, 4.6 at about 27 kilometers deep. So movement, at least for the most part, has kind of halted around the Philippine plate. As you notice here, not a whole lot of activity. Uh, some of this movement down here south of the Philippines is some older activity from last night. The recent one, most recent one was a 4.4, a little bit further back building here 
uh, towards the Papua New Guinea area with a 4.4 uh, at 10 kilometers deep. Uh, movement around the Fiji area and the Tonga Trench. Not a whole lot of new activity. In fact, the 4.8 from much, much earlier this morning there, uh, just outside the Fiji Islands area at 410 kilometers. Further west as we go, uh, looks like a little bit of activity with a 4.2, 4.0, and uh, a little bit of other earthquake activity outside of Turkey as well. Uh, but looking at these timestamps here, these were from a late afternoon, uh, well, actually early evening yesterday. Yeah, because we got today's date here. Alrighty, let's see what else we have here. The Atlantic Ocean, somewhat calm. Got a 4.6 out there around the uh, Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. That one was from yesterday as well. So a lot of this activity from late last night when I was doing the update. So what does that mean? Well, we're entering into a little quiet zone, so to speak, here. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information here from the hazard notification system from the HVO in regards to Kilauea, a volcano, which is still continuing here. Uh, looks like most of the recent eruptive activity has been confined to the crater. It's been saying that since uh, last year, September 29th to be exact, of last year. Uh, Mona Loa is the one I'm watching. Uh, there's no currently no upgraded signs of an eruption. Uh, looks like 29 small magnitude below 3.0 earthquakes. Um, about two, two to three miles deep there uh, beneath the upper elevation northwest flank of Mauna Loa. Both, uh, both of these regions have historically been seismically active uh, during periods of unrest on Mauna Loa. So definitely kick it up there a little bit. Uh, GPS instru instruments at the summit on the flanks of Mauna Loa continue to measure inflation rates elevated since mid-September. So still kind of keeping an eye on things out there, right? Got to keep an eye on things. Let's go ahead and check out the um, latest activity here. Stand by for just a second. Zoom in to the um, Mauna Loa area. I kind of want to see the... Uh, See, on my end here, this arrow is just a little bit too big. It's kind of hard to click on some of those uh, those little triangles there. It's going to be more so with these uh, seismic stations. Um, Mauna Loa, seismic activity past 12 hours here. Uh, looks pretty spotty here, folks. Uh, localized activity is going to be this well-defined spiky activity. And uh, that kind of looks like it's distant. It could be away from this seismograph station there around Pahala. Uh, that one as well. So things kind of mellowing out, kind of calming down, so to speak, around the Mauna Loa volcano currently. All right. Space weather. I'd like to say that we're getting into some active activity, but, man, it's, it's uh, getting calm. The only noticeable feature out here is this massive coronal hole which is uh, quite impressive, but uh, it's kind of situated down there on the southern portion of the sun, not completely directed at Earth, but we may get a glancing blow uh, once the data comes in there from number 34 as it rotates into the view of our view, as far as the uh, lining up towards Earth goes. Sunspot activity looks like 3125 is about the only one out there that's, uh, well, 3124 is up there as well. Kind of uh, looking a little bit complex, but the latest imagery here shows 3124 way, way over here around the southwestern portion of the sun. And these other sunspots, pretty stable. They are decaying. There's not a whole lot of new developing sunspots out there uh, currently. And that's why we're looking at uh, some very quiet conditions with only a 35% chance of a sea flare. That's pretty minimal. All other flare potential, pretty stable. Look at that, 1% or below. So that's uh, that's it. Solar wind data currently low as she goes there. Speed's going down, density, temp. Everything's pretty stable. Not a whole lot to uh, look forward to far as the space weather activity goes for now. 
All right, guys. So once again, um, let me check trimmer here real quick. I kind of got sidetracked because all these toolbars up here, these little links are different uh, from my other computer. Okay, now it's just weird. I don't know why that's like that. Uh, what are we looking at? 73 epicenters of trimmer. Holy smokes, that's a major drop compared to the past couple weeks here of trimmer activity. Where we've seen uh, probably quite a... We, I can't remember the exact number here. I don't know if I'll be able to pull this up. This goes back since about the 10th of last month to about the 19th of right now. And uh, we're looking at 12,590 epicenters of trimmer just in that short, probably about five week, what, five week time frame. And most of it confined here. Oh, goodness. Confined to this uh, region. I don't know why it's doing that, guys. I got to figure that out. But, uh, and today's, ep today's uh, epicenter is only 73. So... A pretty big drop in the number of trimmers and uh, what does that mean well it means that uh, the subduction down here has kind of come to a halt doesn't mean that the uh, trimmer activity or at least the potential for the Cascadia earthquake activity is any less um, you know eventually you can only wound this you can only wind this subduction zone up so tight here and it's kind of uh, you can kind of see it on this map, but it does sit off just off the coast here of the Pacific Northwest and Northern California and the Vancouver Island ranges. So it's just, uh, it's waiting. Definitely waiting. Look at that. It got my, I even got my old map on here. I tried to send out, sync my bookmarks uh, for my, uh, from my other computer that I've normally used to the new computer. And, uh, it brought up this map, which I haven't seen in a long time. I haven't seen this, uh, the Caltech education website here that shows the, uh, the squares, the old fashioned map, which I kind of like. There's the caldera, not a whole lot going on there at Yellowstone currently, or, uh, not Yellowstone, but, uh, Long Valley. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. And, uh, we will chat at you guys real soon. And we are going to be working on getting that volcano stream up and running tonight. I don't know what time it's going to be up. Um, it's about, it's almost 8 here along the West Coast. But I'm tired and I've been working on this computer trying to get it back up and running. So I may wait till the morning. But uh, I'm definitely going to push for it tonight. See if I can't get it up. So, alright guys, uh, check that out once uh, it is up. Should have two different live streams up here on the Earthmaster channel. One covering earthquake activity, solar weather, and whatnot. And uh, one strictly on volcanic activity. Uh, along with some webcams and um, a couple other different features uh, when it comes to volcanic activity. So look for that. I think it's pretty cool. And uh, we'll be integrating that into the entire channel. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later on. Peace out, everyone.